This is the Jail Ministry Podcast. The J-A-I-L, or Jesus Acts and Inmates Lives Ministry, is Christ-centered and provides programs focused on the prevention and intervention for the incarcerated. Jail Ministry also provides support to offenders, criminal justice professionals, victims, and their families. Thank you for your continued financial assistance. For more information, visit jailmen.org. Now, here's today's lesson. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. This is Evangelist Eric Walton from Jail Ministry in Belton, Texas. Uh, we're, uh, we're going to be over in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, but I'm going to start in chapter 20 of Meth Matthew, uh, verses uh, 27, 28, mainly 28. And the title of the message is No Denominations. And, and, and when I read verse 28, you'll see what Jesus is talking about. No denominations. I'm not against anybody's denominations. All right, they call themselves and all that stuff. But I'm saying we're, we're no denomination. And then and, and, uh, we're using the scripture. We're not mad or angry or fighting with anybody, so don't misunderstand. Verse 27 and 28, we'll read those and pray, and we'll get to our message for today. God bless you for being with us. Uh, I know you got various struggles going on. The main struggle you need to worry about is living for Jesus. Amen. That's the number one thing you need to do is live for Jesus. Um, and, and whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. They could have used the word servant, but they used the word slave. Amen. Jesus is speaking here. Whoever is first among you, let him be your slave. Amen. And uh, I, 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 I tell you what. You get a whole lot done when everybody's deferring to the other person. Amen. So verse 28, just as a son of man, that's a, that's a euthanism in the Bible used to talk about Jesus Christ. Just as a son of man did not come to be served. He didn't come to serve. He's God. He's God. Over in first, first uh, over in uh, uh, Gospel of John, uh, chapter thirteen, verse thirty-five, he gets down. He takes off his clothes. He has a robe tied around him, and he's washing their dirty feet. That is a slave's job. When he got to Peter, Peter turned and pulled away. He says, "You gonna wash my feet?" He said, "Yep." And he said, "You ain't gonna wash my feet." He said, "If I don't wash your feet, you have nothing to do with me. All right, you have nothing to do with me." The idea of being a Christian, I need to be a slave when it comes to being a daddy. I need to be a slave when it comes to being a husband. I need to be a slave when it comes to being a member of uh, jail ministry. I need to be a slave when I go over to the jail and preach and teach to the young men. I need to be a servant of all to serve. Um, and, and God will bless you. Amen. Now, let me read that. Uh, uh, let's see here. I, I, I'll read 28 again. Uh, just as a son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The service that we are going to do is to tell the world the gospel. Amen. We're going to go all over the world and tell the world the gospel. All right. There's nothing wrong with being paid for it. Uh, 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 some of us aren't even paid to do it. Amen. Nothing wrong with being paid for it. Amen. The ox is worthy of his hire. But, but some of us aren't even paid for it. And, and you know what? I say we're not paid for it. God's going to pay us. Amen. Some way or another, God's going to pay us. Turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And uh, we'll knock this thing out here real quick. And uh, uh, verse 19. Amen. Um, and, and, and the title of this section is Saving All Men. Now when it says all men, all mankind, males and females. Paul's goal, Jesus' goal uh, in the Great Commission, Paul's goal here and Jesus' co uh, goal in the Great Commission is that you try to reach every last single man. I worked with a jail ministry over in uh, Lexington, South Carolina. And in Lexington, they don't have like a county jail or anything. They've got a, a county jail that ha totally has its own force of police and all this other stuff. But we made sure in that five-day revival we did in that jail, we did no uh, preaching in that jail, uh, having preaching services. Only in the day we witness, and at night we have services. 
we, we did, that jail did not allow that. They said you could witness all day long and we'd go into every tank, every segregation they had. And, and no, everybody did not get saved. But everybody heard the gospel. We served those men. We were down on our hands and knees with the chute open, giving out gospel tracts and asking him, uh, my name's Eric, I'm from the church. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? The gospel, do you know the death, burial, and resurrection? The word gospel means good news. It means the death, burial, and resurrection. Well, well here we go. For though I am free from all men, I didn't pray, let me pray. Father, thank you, I ask your blessing on the lesson and uh, pray for these men. Pray most of all that I present just what you once said and touch hearts and lives and change the world through Jesus Christ. He's already done it. Pray he does it some more. Pray for the mass shooting in Georgia um, because we took the Ten Commandments out of the school. Now the kids have no sense of God. They're just a bunch of animals and they're killing one another. Uh, pray this message would talk to hearts and change lives. People would get saved and make a move for you. In Jesus' name, amen. For though I am free from all men, this is Paul talking now, I'm a, I'm a free citizen. I got all my bills paid. I, I have no obligations. I have made myself a servant to all. I used to be a Pharisee, a Pharisee, and did everything that the Jews wanted me to do and that Israel wanted me to do. I'm born in the tribe of Benjamin. I am a Jew, blah, blah, blah. I've left all of that. Myself a servant to all that I might win the more. I could not narrow myself like me. Well, I'm only going to talk to black guys. Well, 70 some inmates are, are, are white and Hispanic. 70, 80, 70, 80, 90 percent. 70, 80, 90 percent of them are, are Hispanic and white and black. I won't be able to witness to a whole lot of people, okay? And God said, no, be a servant to all. We all come from one blood, Matthew 17, 26. We all come from Adam. There are not three or four or five different races or a hundred or whatever they're saying now today. There's one. And to get saved, they all got to get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Paul said, but though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. His goal in life wasn't to have a big house, a big car, this, that, and the other. By the way, my number one goal in life not a car, not a house, not this, not that. I, I just moved to Texas seven years ago. I came over to Texas for one reason, to work with jail ministry and tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I, well, you might go over there and tell them and none of them listen. It doesn't matter. I'm going to tell them. Uh, I am free from all men. Amen. I have no encumbrances. Uh, 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 there's nothing in the world I can do more than what I want, but I, I remember my uh, overall uh, goal to, to God, uh, to give out the gospel, all right, and, and, and that's why God freed me from my sin to serve him, and, and that's why I'm talking about me. In uh, 1979, uh, he freed free from my drugs and all that sort of thing. I, I went and got married, went to Bible college, and then I started telling people the gospel. And God made everything fall in purpose. He laid it on my, he, he, he made it a burden on me. It was a burden. I would always be thinking about doing it. I'd always try to find a way. Can I tell you about Jesus? Can I tell you about Jesus? No, get out of here, you know. And uh, that, that, ain't, that didn't happen very often, but every now and then it would, you know. So, so let, let's move on now. If lost folks just had a little help, a little help. I'm going to turn my phone off so it doesn't come on while we're uh, doing the uh, program. If they just had a little help of telling them about Jesus, I went and knocked on a door in Gastonia, North Carolina. There was three of us. And the lady said, well, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm getting ready to go here. She was an upper middle class woman, and she was leaving. She dressed very nicely. It was winter time. She's getting ready to get in her big, nice Cadillac SUV. I said, well, wouldn't you like to know, isn't it important for you to know uh, uh, um, uh, where your eternal destiny be if you're going to be in heaven or hell? She said, yes. And I said, well, why don't you take a few minutes? She says, well, if I'm late for work, I might miss this deal. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but lose her soul? You know? I said, all right, well, I'm going to leave you something on the door. You read it, and there's a prayer to say at the end. 
and uh, uh, God's free grace. We're saved by grace through faith. Jesus has did all the work on the cross. You cannot work your way to heaven. Amen. So uh, if lost feet just had a little help, if lost people just had a little help, somebody uh, uh, early on uh, to, to send them on the right way, Jesus Christ's way, God had me join the military. And by joining the military, a guy named Guy Howard, two and a half years after I'd been in the military, uh, I was transferred from one place to another place, and uh, things really weren't going that well. I got back into dealing drugs and stuff like that. I had just turned 20. I went over to Okinawa, Japan, and I ran into a guy named Guy Howard. He says, hey, why don't you come to church with us? We're having a revival. I said, really? I, I don't know what a revival is or anything like that. I said, okay, all right, you know, I'll come. Uh, my roommates promised that they were going to come and stuff like that. They never, ever went, not one time. I went, I got saved, and the gospel, the good news, the death of Jesus Christ on the cross, the burial, and the resurrection took care of everything, amen? He paid my sin debt. I was born again. I was not perfect. Quit smoking dope, quit drinking, quit going to the club. But I had other things I still had to work on. I had so much in my life, amen? Uh, verse uh, 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 Jeremiah 23, 22, we're not going to turn over there, but it says, if the preachers had just stood in my council, don't go over there trying to woo them and wow them with great sna uh, snazzy words and uh, flashy jests and a robe on and all this other stuff and acting like you're some big wig or this, that, and the other and driving up in a Rolls Royce or something. No, no. If you had just continued in my word, he said in Jeremiah 20, uh, 23, 22, they, the people, we, people like me, I'm an example of it, would have stood in his council. That was 45 years ago, men, when, when Guy Howard invited me to come uh, hear the preaching at Maranatha Baptist Church in Okinawa. I'm not a Baptist, okay? I'm a Bible believer. At the time, I didn't know none of that stuff. I didn't understand it. Uh, I have nothing against the Baptists. I love them fine. Uh, I love other ones, Bible churches and uh, other, other groups, amen? So let's go to verse 20. Uh, in verse 20 of chapter 9, uh, it says, And to the Jews, now watch what he says here. To the Jews, I became a Jew. So to a secular Jew, I became a Jew. Some guy who's not really religious. Amen. And, and to the, uh, 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 that I might win the Jews. To those who are under the law, Jews who are orthodox Jews are very, very re religious Jews. Uh, 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 as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. 21, to those who are without the law, that is the Gentiles, uh, um, as without law, not being without law toward God, but under, to, under law toward Christ, that I might win those who are without law. You know, and in a second in verse 20, to, to, to the weak, I became as weak. The people who are like I deal with in jail and prison, uh, weak in that we've uh, uh, tore up our lives with drugs, alcohol, whoremongering, and, and going in and out of court, going in and out of jail, and this, that, and the other. And, and, and by the way, uh, uh, he, would, uh, he took a Nazarite vow. Uh, I believe it's Acts 21. And you say, why would Paul do something like that? Why would he take a Nazarite vow? Why would he? Why would he? Why would he go through all that? I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a Christian now. He's 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 not a Jew anymore. Just like I'm not a Baptist anymore. I'll go preach in a Baptist church, as long as they let me preach the word. I, and by the way, I'm not going in there. I'm not going to say anything bad about Baptists or anything. A Bible church, a, a Calvary Chapel church. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. I'm just going to go preach the word. Preach the word. Teach the word. Give them the gospel. Above all that I teach, I'm going to give them the gospel. And they're going to get saved. All right? Some of those people are going to get saved. I don't know if it's going to be one. I don't know if it's going to be a hundred. But they're going to get saved. Why is that? You know? So, so I'm almost done uh, with this half of the message. We'll come back and there'll be a second half. Amen? But I want you to understand that in 1 Corinthians, we'll turn to it uh, when we come back. 1 Corinthians 15, it tells you the four parts of the gospel. The death the burial, the resurrection, and then he was seen after he was killed by over 500 witnesses. All of his, all of his apostles, some of the women, and then 500 people. 
Well, God bless you. I'm glad you came and you're on to this today. And uh, let's be a servant. Now, you pray with me and we'll close down this part of it. And we'll add the next half of the message and you can listen to that uh, uh, when you get time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for the opportunity to present your gospel message, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and then the greater overall truth, the gospel of the whole Bible. I pray if any is unsaved, today would be the day where they would say, Lord, save me through the gospel. I believe, by grace through faith, I believe that Christ died for me to save my wretched soul. Forgive me where I failed you at, Lord, in Christ's name, amen.